question is uh, from gate 2022 question number 38 i have not mentioned the session i guess session 2 was there so uh, basically what uh, the question says is a planner four bar linkage mechanism with three revolved kinematic pairs and one prismatic kinematic pair is shown in the figure where a b is perpendicular to c and f t is perpendicular to c the t-shaped link c d e f is constructed such that the slider b can cross the point uh, d right and uh, now uh, and c e is sufficiently long now for the given lens as we shown uh, the mechanism is they have given some options like a Grashof chain with uh, links A, G, A, B and C, D, E, F completely rotatable about the ground link F, G. Then uh, the second option is a non Grashof chain with all oscillating links. Then a Grashof chain A, B completely rotatable and oscillatory links A, G and C, D, E, F. And last is on the border of Grashof and non Grashof. See, see what we have discussed is uh, all the turning pairs were there where we have classified Grashof uh, links and uh, different mechanism based on that uh, Grashof's law of S plus L right less than or equal to P plus Q so whatever we have discussed in this Grashof's law, uh, law at that particular point of instance all the four, four pair were turning pair while well, here you are having three revolute kinematic pairs and one prismatic kinematic pair right so one is sliding right and the other three are this one two and three are uh, you are having this as revolute pair while one is uh, this particular one is sliding pair so here uh, if you apply this one then you are having shortest link as 1.5 and this is uh, three cent uh, this is five centimeter right so if you add this to it is 6.5 which is not uh, less than or equal to the sum of remaining two that is three plus three so you can directly say that a known Grashof chain with oscillating link but that is not the correct answer why because here you are having one sliding link right so in that case what will happen is uh, this uh, 1.5 centimeter is the shortest link and the link beside the shortest link is fixed so here you will have this uh, first option is the correct option all this uh, AG AB and CDEF can completely rotate around the fixed link FG so this is how you are having uh, this particular uh, question right from the Grashof law which we have discussed in the last session Next one. before that let me check if anyone is there hello sir yes so this session offline videos is available that that we will uh, see and discuss at the end right whatever doubts you are having right we can uh, discuss it at the end right or you can uh, type in the chat box i will look into it while i will ask you to solve the question i will look into the chat box is that okay hello sir yes I have not attended the previous class, sir. Ha, so, uh, so the, uh, means uh, I will see whether it will be possible to make you available those lectures. But this lecture is uh, uh, what we can say different uh, uh, content, right? And whatever we are going to solve the questions today for that, the session we are starting now is uh, enough to solve the questions we are going to see today. Is that okay? Okay, sir. Okay. So please upload in the session uh, lecture video, sir. Sorry. Sir, lecture video, sir. Please upload in the website, sir. Ha, huh, that is what I am telling. Uh, whenever that uh, a particular platform will be there, uh, over there uh, we will share this. But for that first, uh, I guess some discussion forum or that kind of uh, official platform needs to be generated. So. The authorities are uh, doing those things so whenever it will be done and this will be uh, shared with you okay yes sir okay so let us continue
so here uh, the next is uh, the steering gear mechanism is also important thing right so here if we see the condition for perfect uh, steering so whenever a vehicle is taking a turn the steering mechanism is applied uh, or provided on the front wheels right so here on the front wheels we are having this uh, uh, steering mechanism provided so whenever this uh, particular wheel is going to take a turn both wheel is going to make certain angle as it is mentioned inner wheel and outer wheel right theta and phi so when we are taking a left turn this can be considered as inner wheel this can be considered as outer wheel so inner wheel is making an angle of theta and outer wheel is making an angle of phi so why we are deriving this condition for perfect steering is whenever vehicle is taking a turn there must be uh, what we can say that particular thing must be done without skidding right without skidding right so wheels should not skid otherwise there will be more wheels the of skidding, sir? sorry so what is the meaning of skidding skidding uh, skidding means uh, uh, it will have friction with the ground and it will not perfectly uh, uh, what we can say uh, take so is there a difference between slipping and skidding? The slipping is, I guess, uh, uh, we can say uh, almost means uh, same. I guess slipping or skidding. So we can say almost. slipping. Ah, yes, yes, yes. So oh, it should okay, not have, you, have that friction. Yes, it should not have that friction while taking a turn, right? So for that, uh, so there is no friction, sir. Sorry. So there is no friction. There is. Sir, jo <coughs> sir, skidding, skidding, sir. Yes. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir, yes, sir. So let us first see this, right? So here in this uh, particular figure, as you can see, you are having two different triangles, right? Triangle PBI and triangle PAI, right? So here your coat phi will be uh, this PA over AI sorry p a over this uh, p i right and coat theta will be p b over p i so when you go for this uh, coat phi minus coat theta then it will be this uh, p a minus pb upon pi right so pa minus pb is nothing but this uh, distance uh, c which is given here this is base or uh, what we can say the distance between this axle and pi is nothing but b right so this is how in order to avoid this uh, skidding while taking a turn condition for perfect steering is given with coat phi minus coat theta is equal to c by b right uh, and b is the distance between front and rear wheel right so this is how you are having this condition for perfect steering now if you go for uh, there are different types of uh, mechanism steering gear mechanism so if you see this uh, Ackerman steering gear mechanism so in that Ackerman steering gear mechanism this is the mechanism right a b c d so all the pairs are turning pairs in this uh, Ackerman steering gear mechanism and it is shown that when it is taking a left turn how this uh, mechanism will look like the changed position is shown with this uh, dotted lines right yes sir uh, i have one doubt regarding turning pair mechanism can we can we discuss it at the end okay sir okay uh -huh. okay okay now the second one is this uh, davis steering gear mechanism so as you can see in davis steering gear mechanism you are having two sliding pairs here right 
sorry this is a slider this is a slider so this is how in uh, your this uh, Davis steering gear mechanism you are having two sliding pair and two turning pair right so Davis steering gear mechanism is having uh, more perfect uh, condition for steering or it is more exact rather right but as it is having the sliding pairs uh, it is not generally used because sliding pairs are having more wear and tear so this Davis steering gear mechanism is not uh, generally used right so this is how uh, you are having this uh, different kinds of steering gear mechanisms right so once you are done with this then we can start with our uh, main uh, today's topic that is displacement velocity and acceleration analysis so in that there are various method first method we are going to see is this instantaneous center method right for drawing your velocity diagrams and all so instantaneous center method means whenever any uh, particular body has relative motion with respect to other body then it can have a uh, uh, simultaneous motion right like uh, rotary as well as uh, linear motion right so uh, when you are considering uh, the motion of a particular link as a rotating motion around a particular center then it is considered as this particular uh, uh, instantaneous center so in this given figure this figure if you see here you are having a body P which is having this uh, rotational motion with respect to this uh, particular body Q right so here in that uh, rigid body P you are having two points A and P right so if you take these two points these points are having a rotating motion around a fixed point i that is known as instantaneous center how you are going to get that point is if you uh, take a linear velocity of a at a particular instant right at a particular instant at a particular instant right you can take velocity of a or linear velocity of a in this direction as it is mentioned here Similarly, at that instant, velocity of B or linear velocity of B must be in this particular direction, right? So, once you take perpendicular from both this uh, particular points A and B, you will find this intersection point I, right? And that is the point around which this both the points are actually rotating. That is why it is known as instantaneous center of rotation for this particular points. So this is how you are having this uh, instantaneous center of rotation, right? So once you have idea about what is this instantaneous center of rotation, then you can see this Kennedy's theorem, right? So Kennedy's theorem is uh, regarding uh, when you are having two uh, different uh, links right and you are going to add third link then the third uh, particular link have their instantaneous center must lie on the uh, what we can say that uh, straight line joining the instantaneous center of rotation for the other two right so that we will uh, discuss by this example here you are having three different links P, Q and R. P, Q and R are three different linkages. Link R is fixed link. R is fixed link. P and Q are having motion or relative motion with each other. So here actually this uh, P is having a uh, rotation around this fixed point P, R and Q is having a fixed uh, rotation around this point QR so now if you take a particular point where they are meeting like, like this PQ so this PR and QR are nothing but instantaneous center of rotation between link P and R and between link Q and R right this PR and QR are instantaneous center of rotation for this link P and R and link Q and R now if you go for this uh, instantaneous center of rotation for link PQ and if you assume uh, it at this particular point right so here if you take uh, consider this point PQ on link P then the direction of uh, what we can say linear velocity will be in this direction as it is mentioned as VP 
and if you consider that point pq on link q then the direction will be this one right uh, vq so the same point cannot have two different direction of velocity and hence this particular uh, pq cannot lie at any other point other than line joining this pr and qr right so this pq must lie on this line which is joining this points pr and qr so that is why this kennedy theorem says that whenever you are having this uh, two uh, links having their uh, fixed point with any other link and then the third instantaneous uh, center must lie on the same line or on the straight line that is what the kennedy's theorem says right now apart from that uh, you must have idea about number of instantaneous center right so whenever you are having any mechanism then you must have a certain number of links right and from that you can calculate the number of instantaneous center so if you are having number of link as 4 then number of instantaneous center will be 4 into 3 by 2 will be 6 right so uh, one second if someone is there right so if you are having Yes. So here, sir, uh, sir, the formula of number of instantaneous center is N C two, na? Yes, yes. Or you can oh, okay, say, ha, huh, or you can say this uh, N N minus one by two, same, right? So here, four into three by two, that is six only. So if you take this uh, mechanism which is shown in the figure, that is one, two, three, and four, right? Four number of links are there, so you will have total six number of instantaneous center, right? so here in case of this mechanism uh, whenever you are having turning pair those two turning means those two links which are joined by turning pair must have their instantaneous center uh, on the uh, center line of the pin which is used to join those two so here one two two three three four and one four are having their instantaneous center of rotation at the points right at which they are they are joined so here uh, here you are having this two uh, this four instantaneous ce centers straight away with you one two two three three four and one four now in order to get this uh, instantaneous center one three what you have to do is you have to uh, assume that you are having a link uh, one and link three right and you are adding link two so link 1 is having this uh, 1 2 instantaneous center with link uh, 2 and link 3 is having instantaneous center with link 2 3 so the instantaneous center 1 3 must lie on the straight line joining this 1 2 and 2 3 right so this is why you have had this extended straight line similarly you can see that link 3 and link 1 is joined with link 4 also so it is having already link, uh, this instantaneous center of rotation link uh, this one four and three four so uh, here also you have to have the link force this uh, instantaneous center of rotation in the line or straight line which is extended on this direction so when this two line is going to intersect you will have this particular instantaneous center of rotation one three right similarly for 2 4 you have to have this extended lines on 1 2 1 4 and 2 3 3 4 right for this you can also have one more trick right if you are having this uh, 1 2 3 4 right like this if you can write like this 1 2 3 4 right so here you are having this 1 2 2 3 3 4 and 1 4 now in order to join this 1 3 what you have to do is you have to extend 1 4 and 3 4 are you extending 1 4 and 3 4 yes and you have to extend 1 2 and 2 3 are you extending 1 2 and 2 3 yes right so like that see for 1 3 as I told you you have to extend 1 4 and 3 4 similarly for uh, <laughs> yes Sir, uh, what is the instantaneous velocity? Sorry? So, what is the instantaneous velocity? 
instantaneous velocity uh, actually uh, i guess uh, whatever this instantaneous center of rotations are giving you the data is for a particular configuration and uh, for a particular instant you are getting that so whatever you are getting is that point of instant the different linkages are having this different uh, velocities which you are calculating so that must be the thing i guess right and through this analysis actually after calculating this velocity and acceleration you are going to further uh, calculate the forces acting on this links and all so that is why it will be helpful to you in designing the dimensions and all because after that force and all you can have the uh, stress acting on it right uh, so this is how the material which you are going to use for making this links and all will come into picture and ultimately we will be able to decide the cross section and uh, a material as per your material you will decide the cross section and the material required to build that link to bear that stress which will be available from this uh, a velocity acceleration data right so uh, right now we are discussing how you are uh, getting this uh, instantaneous center how you are going to locate this so for location so, yes so can you explain once again with that quadrilateral i mean uh, the uh, square with the circle square with the circle na yeah so uh, yes once again i am uh, repeating let me do it again one second so here as i have told you you are having this four links 1 2 3 4 5 right? and you are locating the instantaneous center of location right so if you consider this is uh, 1 2 2 3 3 4 and 4 1 right and now you want to locate this 1 3 so in order to locate this 1 3 what you have to do is you have to extend this 1 4 and 3 4 here this 1 4 and 3 4 you are extending similarly you have to extend this 1 2 and 2 3 this 1 2 and 2 3 also you are extending in order to get 2 1 3 right similarly for getting this 2 4 what you are going to do is you are going to extend 1 2 and 1 4 so here for getting 2 4 you are extending this uh, say 1 2 and 1 4 to get in uh, in order to get this 2 4 you are extending 1 2 and 1 4 similarly you have to extend 2 3 and 3 4 so here 2 3 and 3 4 is extended in order to get this 2 4 so this is how you are having uh, your location or you need to locate the instantaneous center of uh, rotation right so this is how you can locate it of writing 1 2 3 4 sorry sir is the name sequence of writing the points that were written on the circle Uh, you can write in the same sequence as i have mentioned huh? sir if if we choose 1 3 2 4 we will it not so the problem nahi hoga na i have not tried actually but you need to check you need to check whether it is same or it is having any difference right okay sir okay okay, okay. so now now then moving to the next thing that is rules for locating instantaneous center as i have told you whenever you are having any turning pair your instantaneous center of location uh, instantaneous center of rotation will be located at the this particular center line of the pin which is joining this link 1 and 2 if you are having a slider sliding on a particular surface then as you can see the instantaneous center of uh, rotation will be at infinity right because it is having parallel uh, velocities to each other so when you go for finding the intersection you will have lying it at infinity so for slider it is at infinity and when any particular link is uh, rolling pure rolling in uh, on the other uh, link then you will find it at the intersection point right so this is how you are having the various uh, location of instantaneous center of rotation here i have uh, taken one problem from ss ratan right so here 
so what the problem says is in a slider crank mechanism the lengths of the crank and the connecting rod are 200 mm and 800 mm respectively locate all the eye centers of the mechanism for the position of the crank when it has turned 30 degree from the inner dead center also find the velocity of the slider and the angular velocity of the connecting rod if the uh, connecting uh, if the crank rotates at 40 radian per second right so now here uh, the first thing is to locate the all the eye centers right so that uh, you know right how to locate the uh, eye centers right so in case of this uh, particular problem the inner dead center is at 30 degree right? you can have this slider crank mechanism right here you are having a slider right here you are having pin joint here also you are having pin joint if you see this as one two three and slider as four right so your i one two will be here only here you will have your i one two here you will have your i three four which are connected by turning joint right and at this here you will have i two three correct and then uh, you can have your i one four at infinity because between one and four you are having this kind of uh, relation right as mentioned in this figure b so one four will lie at infinity so you can have your one four at infinity right here and here as it is already mentioned here now in order to get one three and two four as you have done in that uh, four bar mechanism here in slider crank mechanism also you have to extend right so for getting 1 3 what you are going to extend is 1 2 and 2 3 so here you will extend this 1 2 and 2 3 similarly you will extend on the other hand 1 4 and 3 4 so here also you will have some extension so this intersection will give you this i 1 3 and similarly in order to get the 2 4 what you are going to extend is 1 2 and 1 4 right so here 1 2 and 1 4 is there so you will extend it and you will extend uh, this 2 3 and 3 4 right so 2 3 and 3 4 you are having on this line so it will be extended so here you will have i 2 4 right so what you are asked is you are asked to find the velocity of slider right so that is v 4 so velocity of slider can be available from uh, your this particular omega of link 2 and the distance i1 to i24 whatever distance between i1 to 24 will be there you can calculate this uh, linear velocity right similarly for finding this omega 3 for finding omega 3 right what you can do is you can have this uh, velocity at point b is known right at velocity at point 2 or velocity at point b you can say divide by this distance i13 i23 so this is how you can uh, uh, find the different things which is asked you it will be very time taking because you have to construct it with uh, particular scale and uh, dimension as mentioned so we are not going to do that now because it will take a lot of time but you have to have idea that how this kind of uh, diagrams are being constructed so can you again sir sorry how the extension v4 equal to omega 2 that is written please may you explain it expression of v4 expression of hello v4, v4 sir v velocity of fourth link v4 actually uh, velocity of fourth link uh, is uh, uh, means connected to the uh, what we can say uh, this instantaneous center uh, at 2 4 right because this link 4 is there right slider is link 4 correct so yes sir, yes, sir. so links force uh, linear velocity is related to the what we can say yeah, this uh, link seconds uh, uh, that velocity what we can say this uh, 
link seconds uh, linear velocity so link sec link to uh, this omega 2 uh, crank yes yes C crank for crank it is given right what is the angular velocity i guess here uh, it is mentioned a crank rotates at 40 radian per second right so from that you once you plot this figure from this cranks uh, angular velocity you can get the linear velocity of slider right because they both are uh, assumed to rotating around the same instantaneous center that is this 2 4 that is why you can go for this uh, expression in order to get the uh, linear velocity of slider right so this is sir. how you are having this uh, equation yes sir the values of i12 and i24 are the lengths of this obstruction i12 24 means this distance right this distance here I one two, I two four is this distance, whatever is there. Sir, sir, can I ask? Sorry. Sir, I am asking that, sir, why don't we take the I one four, like which which you uh, were telling that that would be infinity, but uh, it's totally linkage, na, sir. Uh, one and four. Sorry, one and four. It's totally linked, na. One and isn't it linked? Oh yeah. One and four are linked, but uh, it is linked this way as mentioned in this figure B. One is fixed and other is sliding. So whenever you are having this kind of combination, the instantaneous center of rotation will go at infinity. Whenever uh, it's linked between one, one would be fixed and one would be sliding. Then that would be uh, infinity. Right, yes. Sir? Yes. 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 Okay, sir. Okay. Thank okay. You. Okay. Okay. So now uh, with this, uh, I guess we can go for the next one. Yes. Next is this uh, relative velocity method. So in uh, relative velocity method, actually, uh, what you will have is uh, you can have uh, whenever you are having a rigid body, right? it will have a uh, relative motion between uh, each other on the same particular body you can as we have seen in that instantaneous center of rotation in relative velocity method we will see how one uh, rigid body is having the relative motion about uh, that uh, what we can say center of rotation or the fixed pivot about which it is rotating or like that so for that we have directly taken this uh, question so here again you are having slider crank mechanism so as you can see in this uh, particular uh, figure you are having a, a configuration of an engine mechanism right and the dimensions are given for this crank connecting rod then a uh, distance of center of mass from crank end right and then this ad ad is mentioned this d is a point on the link for that also they are asking to find uh, velocity and all that can be calculated by that uh, simple uh, rationalization of length of linkages and uh, the data we are getting on that velocity diagram right so that is we will see how we will get that right then at the instant the crank has an angular velocity of 50 radian per second clockwise and an angular velo ang angular acceleration of 800 radian per second square now calculate the velocity of d and angular velocity of ab and acceleration of d and angular acceleration of ab and point on the connecting rod which has zero acceleration at that instant right so whenever we are going to solve this uh, kind of questions uh, we will have uh, we have to draw this uh, velocity diagram and acceleration diagram so we will first draw the velocity diagram for this right and whenever you start drawing velocity diagram what you have to do is whatever data is given you have to check that uh, how can we start uh, uh, calculating velocity because velocity diagram will require that linear velocity so if you find this velocity of a with respect to o velocity of a with respect to o it will be v a minus v o right vectorially but as the point o is fixed v a o you can directly mention as v a only which is nothing but r omega right 
so do you know the link length oa yes that is nothing but r right and omega is given right at which uh, your this crank is rotating that is given right that omega of this oa is also given so once you have this data you can draw this particular uh, vector right which is perpendicular to O and G I am putting both are fixed point right O and G here O and G are fixed point so that I am putting as fixed point from that uh, this uh, VA we are going to draw which is having magnitude of OA into omega OA and direction is perpendicular to this link length OA so this uh, I have drawn in order to get the point A right so the very first vector you are going to draw like this once you have drawn this then if you think of velocity of this point B with respect to A then it will be perpendicular to this particular link length BA right so once you have your all the instruments with you like uh, this uh, ruler scale or something like that then you can transfer the direction right from this image to this image and you can take this perpendicular to this AB and you can plot it like this right now you don't know the magnitude right so you can draw a line which is passing through point A and perpendicular to this particular link length AB once you are done with drawing this particular uh, uh, what we can say uh, construction which will give you your velocity of B with respect to A right but you don't know the magnitude you have direction only now one more thing is there the slider b is also having velocity with respect to this point g which is horizontal right which is in horizontal direction so if you draw a horizontal from point g right then you will have some intersection and that is nothing but your point b right so here you are having this velocity of b with respect to a and here you are having your velocity of b only because again this G is fixed as O is fixed so you can write VBG or here you can write VAO or VA right it is same now one more thing the direction of sorry how the direction of VBA is found out sorry VBA ki direction uh, the direction the direction of VBA this uh, uh, sir direction of uh, this uh, VBA is actually uh, I guess from uh, we can say how this uh, B is uh, moving actually when this A uh, goes in this direction as it is mentioned here relatively B will go upward right actually though it is actually at the same point but relative to A it will be found that it is going up right if you try to visualize the uh, mechanism right so because A is coming in this direction now so with how it's found out sorry inclination of VBA sorry inclination of VBA inclination as i have told you now once you have this figure in this figure you are having this link a b drawn right at a particular angle already right sir uh, you can construct this uh, particular diagram you are given the link length o a given the link length a b and this direction or this angle 120 degree so with all this data this a b is having a particular inclination that is already with you yes or no uh, sir i want to ask there sir direction of vba will be perpendicular to ab link yes AB. yes 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 it will be perpendicular to link ab yes as here it is perpendicular to link oa here it is perpendicular to link ab right okay, sir, thank you. Ha, ha. so like that you are having uh, this uh, particular uh, what we can say this uh, uh, this uh, velocity diagram now here you have to locate point D also so how you are going to locate point D so for that please um, mute yourself in order to locate point B you are having BD and BA with you so here also 
you are having this BD and BA. So well, BA is known to you from this velocity diagram. The small BA is known to you. Capital BD and capital BA are also known to you because this link lengths are already with you. You are given that what is AD so you can calculate BD and AD. So and BD and BA are with you. These are physical link lengths, right? This is physical link length. right so as this is physical link length you are having this uh, bd and uh, now you want to calculate this bd because you want to locate point d on your velocity diagram ba is already with you from the drawn geometry and physical link lengths are having with you so once you do this all calculation you can have your point d on this line ba and once you have that point d you can also draw it from the this uh, fixed link in order to get the idea how this D is moving so this is how you can have this velocity diagram right so once you are done with this velocity diagram then you have to start drawing your acceleration diagram in acceleration diagram you will have two different uh, acceleration once one is centripetal acceleration right centripetal acceleration and one is tangential exp uh, this acceleration right so this acceleration may be uh, centripetal or tangential so this uh, centripetal can be calculated from omega square r while this is uh, uh, calculated on alpha into r omega square into r is same as v square upon r right linear velocity upon r and so linear velocities of all the links are with you from this velocity diagram now right so you can calculate the centripetal acceleration of almost all the components from this linear velocity you know the link length so you can calculate this and angular acceleration is given for some of the components so you can also calculate the tangential component for some of the links because uh, angular acceleration is provided right so you can also calculate this so if you talk about this link length oa only then its centripetal acceleration will be towards see I will write like this OA right but here this direction of centripetal acceleration of A is from A to O that is why this direction will be like this right and tangential will be perpendicular to this uh, centripetal acceleration right AC and AT once you have both these components right then you can have the final acceleration of A with respect to O right acceleration of A uh, with respect to O right so let us say this as Sir. full acceleration of point A here little bit confusion is there so I am writing acceleration Sir. yes of A so the centripetal acceleration is in the direction of the link is in the direction towards the center about which it is rotating right so so both this uh, a velocity and acceleration diagram for this construction is there right so I am showing it to you now with this basic uh, information and basic idea you can see now this velocity and acceleration diagram for that particular configuration this is velocity diagram and this is acceleration diagram right so velocity diagram is as we have seen first OA is drawn then this direction is drawn and this direction is drawn and then this T point is located so like this velocity diagram is uh, drawn now in order to draw this acceleration diagram how they <coughs> started is they have this point fixed point right O1 and G1 then the very first uh, thing they have calculated or they have is this one right this O1 AO please mute yourself please mute yourself hello right O1 to AO this is nothing but centripetal as you can see here they have calculated it by v square by r 
V you have already calculated from your velocity diagram, right? And Sir. link length is with U. Q. So for that, as uh, I have told you, first you are going to calculate this centripetal component that is a linear velocity square divided by that link length, right? And then uh, tangential will be calculated from the angular acceleration given. So angular acceleration is given for this uh, crank, and it is perpendicular to this centripetal acceleration. So E O to E one will be calculated. Then, uh, so you can have this particular vector, right? O one E one, which is nothing but acceleration of E with respect to O, right? So once you are having this, then you can have centripetal acceleration of B with respect to A. So that is again from B, uh, from B to A, right? So this is this direction which is mentioned here, and from there you can have again uh, this particular perpendicular for tangential acceleration here this tangential acceleration's magnitude is not there but you can have again well uh, acceleration of b with respect to this fixed link which is in horizontal direction so this particular uh, intersection will give you this point and once you have that point then from this you can have this final a1 b1 also because here it is centripetal component here it will be tangential component right and once you have this particular diagram this o1 e1 b1 again you can locate point d1 as you have located in this particular diagram right so again you can locate d1 here and you can have this particular uh, joining of that d1 to o1 right so this is how your this uh, velocity and acceleration diagram is drawn right so yes sir could you please again explain about the acceleration diagram uh yes i can repeat it one second even even if you do it uh, at the end of the session that would be fine okay okay so then let us uh, move forward right because we need to solve questions also right so let us move forward for now right and i will get back to this uh, slide at the end also right uh, so now let us go to the next slide that is acceleration analysis so in acceleration analysis will be you see in how you are drawing this uh, Uh, what we can say centripetal and tangential components so now here actually when you are having a uh, two different motion of a link right like in your quick return mechanism if you remember in crank and slotted lever mechanism your slider is having linear motion as well as angular motion so once your this kind of component is there in your mechanism it must have coriolis component right so we will see how that coriolis component can be calculated so for that what you have to do is you have to assume that at a particular uh, instant your uh, this slider is uh, on this link o a r as it is mentioned so you are assuming that p on slider and q on a r right so once you have this uh, assumption once you have this assumptions once uh, yes so what you are assuming is now after uh, an instant delta t after an instant delta t your link is rotated by delta theta as you can see in this figure r2 r dash it has moved right so now if you calculate the acceleration along ar then you must have idea about the velocities along ar right at uh, a particular instant uh, in which it is a vertical right and at instant when it is moved by delta theta so if you calculate it uh, along ar then as you can see along ar this along ar means this direction so vertical direction you are having this uh, if you see this uh, different uh, this diagram uh, because of angular velocity and because of linear velocity you are having changes right so you are having initial velocity uh, initial distance r from this point a of your slider p right and this uh, 
uh, angular velocity omega these are initial uh, what we can say parameters after this delta t what you are having is v dash r dash and omega dash right so your v dash is nothing but your initial v plus f into dt f is nothing but linear acceleration your r dash is nothing but r plus delta r and your omega dash is nothing but omega plus alpha delta t right so this is how you are having various parameters right at a particular instant and after this delta t right so if you see you are having uh, this uh, change in velocity due to this linear velocity and due to this particular angular velocity so now here if you check uh, along the uh, this ar acceleration after delta t is this v dash cos delta theta means velocities are there actually this is v dash cos delta theta minus omega dash r dash sin delta theta this is after this delta t time so previously it was what previously it was v only as we have mentioned here so this is change in velocity and you are calculating acceleration so this change in velocity and in the denominator delta t will give you this uh, acceleration along a r now what you are going to do is you are going to put all these values of v dash r dash and omega dash in this equation and as delta theta is very small right it is a uh, very very small right so your cos delta theta is becoming 1 and sin delta theta is becoming delta theta in your this calculations right so when you uh, put these assumptions cos delta theta is 1 and sin delta theta is delta theta then uh, you will end up uh, calculating your acceleration along AR as nothing but f minus omega square r right. I'm not writing the full because it will take uh, too much of time but when you will do this you will find this right so acceleration along AR will be like this and acceleration perpendicular to AR will be one second acceleration sir yes so what is the f here f is as i have mentioned here na, f is linear acceleration f is linear acceleration right so yes. okay okay so here if you go for uh, this uh, perpendicular to er means in this horizontal direction so that you can see at after this delta t you are having v dash shine delta theta plus omega dash r dash cos delta theta right S and before delta t it was omega r right in this direction perpendicular to a r so now again you put values of v dash r dash omega dash and put cos delta theta is equal to 1 and sin delta theta is equal to delta theta then you will end up with equation 2 omega v plus r alpha right where this omega v 2 omega v is known as Coriolis component now Coriolis component is considered positive when when your this uh, road or slotted lever is having uh, this uh, clockwise direction and slider is having outward direction at that time it is positive or your this uh, particular link or the slotted lever is having anti-clockwise direction and your slider is having inward direction at that two instant it is considered at positive while for the other two things it will considered negative means if your li uh, link is slotted lever is having anti-clockwise direction and lever is moving outward means this component will be negative this Coriolis component and if your uh, this uh, link is having uh, clockwise direction and your this uh, slider is moving inside then also it is having that negative uh, a component for your Coriolis component now once you have this idea then you can go for drawing this uh, velocity and acceleration diagram for crank and slotted lever mechanism also 
right so here what they have done this velocity diagram i guess you all can now uh, um, be familiar with this one how they have drawn this is o a and g are already fixed points as you can see o a and g are fixed point so they have taken this as fixed the very first thing what you can do is you can uh, draw as it is in this uh, clockwise direction you can draw this vpo right because it is p with respect to o right similarly uh, what you can do is you can uh, have idea about the direction of this uh, uh, what we can say this q with respect to a right so q with respect to a will be in the direction perpendicular to this link right so this links perpendicular direction you can draw a link over here right and this uh, q with respect to p q is on ar and p is on slider so when you talk about the velocity of q with respect to p then it will be along the length or along the link uh, ar only so you can draw a, li a line parallel to that ar from this point p in order to get this vqp and this is nothing but vqa now r how you have got similarly as you have got that point d r o upon q o is nothing but this or a right that link length upon r q so all these things will be given so that is going to help you in locating this point r so once you are locating the point r then the velocity of r with respect to s will be in the perpendicular direction to this link sr right so you can draw a perpendicular from this point r and velocity of s with respect to g will be in horizontal direction so here you can again put this horizontal so it will intersect at this point so this is how you are going to locate your point s right so this is how you can have your velocity diagram so once you have your velocity diagram then you can start with your acceleration diagram in acceleration diagram also the very first component you will have is this fpo right this is centripetal uh, acceleration of point p with respect to point o so as it is o1 p1 is towards o right now once you have this then uh, what you can do is you can uh, have this uh, particular uh, this uh, this uh, location uh, sorry this fcr pq is the next thing you can draw that is from the 2 omega v you can draw this and it will be perpendicular to this link ar right so this perpendicular to this link ar and as it is coming uh, this direction the uh, direction will be towards this right because we are considering it as positive so as it is going in clockwise this will go outward and it will be perpendicular to this ar in this direction so once you have magnitude of this you can draw this after this for the other component which is perpendicular to this uh, uh, what we can say coriolis component we can draw that right but we don't know the uh, what we can say magnitude so we simply can uh, draw the uh, line which is perpendicular to this right from this point right and it is going to uh, cut this uh, uh, sorry horizontal line from this p1 and you can locate this point q1 right so once uh, you have this point q1 then you can again locate this point r1 and for r1 again you can go for centripetal and tangential component uh, centripetal will have direction from s to r as it is mentioned here from s to r and then perpendicular to this you can have the tangential component and s is again having acceleration with respect to g in horizontal direction so you will draw a horizontal line and it is going to give you this point s1 so this way you can complete your acceleration diagram over here also right so once you are done with all this then you can start with this uh, questions yes sir, I have a question, sir how we can physically understand the coriolis effect of the acceleration 
sorry and we can physically understand as we know that in winds also the coriolis effect ab main usko samajh nahi pata hu ki wo kaise ho jata hai winds mein coriolis effect ko uh, physically kaise perceive kar uh that actually i need to check right at the end i guess you can tell me i will uh, note down this and i will check before that we can solve this uh, questions from gate right okay yeah yes so let us see the questions so here the circular uh, disk has uh, actually it is not shown here right so let me show you uh, you are having a circular disk right so it is having a point o and with respect to that you are having points a and b right so circular disk and uh, you are having this point o and point a and b right so uh, yeah, here they are having that uh, uniform angular velocity omega right two other points a and b are located on the line oz at a distance of ra and rb right ra and rb this can be rb and this can be ra right so now the velocity of point b with respect to point a is a vector of magnitude omega r will be there right its vector magnitude will be omega r right so omega rb minus uh, omega ra and the direction is same as the direction of motion of b right point b so that is correct for the 75th one here actually in the last option you are having omega square rb minus ra right so mistakenly here it is only omega because acceleration of point b with respect to point a is a vector of magnitude again omega square rb minus ra and the direction is from z to o as we know that it is the centripetal direction z may be somewhere here lying right and o is this point as we have already discussed this is point o so this is how you are having your this first uh, question which is from i guess uh, 2003 right now next next is uh, you are having uh this uh what is fig yes yes so please previous question is not solved previous question not solved previous question solved na we have solved previous question yeah this one yes yes i have uh, marked the correct right? correct answer i have marked na Okay, okay. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, okay, okay. I have not generated a poll for that. Now I will generate for the next one. Let us see. Actually, here figure is not given. Let me first draw the figure. The figure is like this. Here you are having this uh, link, right? This link is given, which is having this omega two. and this may be your link 1 this may be your link 2 now we can read the question in the figure uh, shown the relative velocity of link 1 with respect to link 2 is 12 meter per second link 2 rotates at a constant speed of 120 rpm the magnitude of coriolis component of acceleration of link 1 is you have to calculate the magnitude of coriolis component uh right and you have to uh, type in numerical answer so uh, let me generate poll ah uh, one second actually uh, i guess you can type in your answers 
here in poll it is not a b c d na so better you type in your answers i am giving you 40 seconds it is enough right hello yes sir ha uh, please type in your answers in the chat box i am giving you 40 seconds So can you show the questions? Yes, yes, yes. So done. Yes. Yes. So many uh, correct answers are there. Some wrong answers are also there. So basically, what you are going to do is you are going to calculate the Coriolis component, which is nothing but two omega v. Right here, v is given directly. V one with respect to two is twelve meter per second. Right. Now, omega. How you are going to calculate from the RPM two pi m by sixty? So from this you will have certain RPM like four pi or something like that. I guess RPM will be coming right. Now when you uh, go for this equation, final Coriolis component, then it will be two into omega is four pi into this twelve. Uh, so it is ninety-six uh, pi, I guess. So ninety-six pi will come around three zero two, as many of you have answered correctly. Right? Correct. Sir, the direction of Coriolis component will. along the tangential direction only yes 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 hello okay ha huh. okay sir okay now let us go to the next question this one can you see this question on screen yes sir So I am generating poll for this one. One second. This from 2013. One second. Option E. Can you see the poll? Can you see poll? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, now you can attempt this question. I am giving you one minute. You can calculate.
So done? Yes. yes. So I am ending the pool. Huh? Okay. So many of you get correct answer. Right? Because here what we are going to do is uh, absolute acceleration of the block at location A, right? So absolute acceleration chahiye agar, right? Then what we have to do is we have to have vector sum of this to omega v and omega square r, right? So two omega v will be in the direction perpendicular to this, and omega square r will be along the link length. So once you calculate this values you have to take sum of this both 2 omega v square plus omega square r whatever vector you got square so 2 omega v will give you what 2 omega v will give you 3 right because 2 into omega is 2 and this uh, uniform velocity 0.75 right so 2 omega v is going to give you this 3 and omega square r is going to give you this uh, 2 square into 1 is 4 right and this again this whole square and the root of this will be your answer so here it is 3 square plus 4 square right so that is nothing but 5 right so this is the correct answer Okay, so shall we move to the next question? Yes, sir. Uh, so here, now you can see this question on your screen. I am generating pool for this one also. One second. I am generating pool for this one. This from 2014. Yes. This one. No, for this I think we have A, B, C, D. Can you see the hole? Yes, sir. Now you can try and answer this question.
sedang dan so let me end the poll then so now let us see many of you have answered correctly so have you calculated like this only here as it is given that it one second let me draw it correctly so what is given is here you are having at 20 degree <laughs> yes yes sir in previous slide is, uh, sir answer is coming 34 sir the previous question sir answer was 5 for the previous question na sir 34 is coming sir sorry sir 30 sir answer 30 sir 34 sir is coming 34 sir i have solved this one na this question you are talking about this, this question yes sir ha ah, so you can see no? yes sir okay sir how can sir 3 square sir as it is given na values 2 omega v is 2 is there then two, omega is given as 2 and uh, this velocity is given as 0.75 so 4 into 0.75 is 3 yes sir okay yes sir yes sir yes sir okay so let us move to this one now so here this, here you are having uh, this velocity of t is in this please mute yourself please mute yourself some someone please mute yourself please there please mute yourself suvend suvend yes sir suvend please mute yourself hello so let us ha huh, please mute everyone so here vp is in this direction as mentioned here now vq is given at 45 degree right you are asked to calculate uh, this vp vq is given right now this uh, link is having this both the points p and q so as what we have discussed if you take perpendicular to this and perpendicular to this then this link is uh, assumed to be rotating around the same point this instantaneous center at this you can write as ipq right now once you have this instantaneous center with you you have this vp divided by this p into ip p ipq that is the distance right similarly vq divided by q ipq so you have to calculate this distance from this ge geometry right so here this is 20 degree so this is 70 degree this link length is given as 2 so this will be 2 sin 70 here this is perpendicular so this is again 45 so uh, as this is uh, 2 this is 70 this is 2 sin 70 this is 2 cos 70 and here it will be uh, cos uh, this particular can be calculated from cos 45 is equal to this x upon 2 sin 70 right so when you apply this uh, sorry 2 sin 70 upon x so if you uh, further simplify you will find This is root two into two sine seventy. Right, root two into two sine seventy will be this from this triangle, right? This one. In this triangle, if you apply cos forty five, is equal to this two uh, uh, sine seventy divided by x, then x will be your root two into two sine seventy. Now this side will be root two into two sine seventy into sine forty five. Sine forty five is again one by root two. so this will be again i guess 2 sin 70 right so this way you are having all the datas with you now you are having this distance p i p q with you and q i p q with you so if you put all the values v q is given as 1 
so if you put all the data your answer VP will be coming as 0.96 so this is the correct answer right so let us move to the next one this one right so here uh, can you type in the answers now Here a rigid link PQ of length 2 meter rotates about the pin end Q with a constant angular acceleration of 12. When the angular velocity of the link is 4 radian per second, magnitude of the resultant acceleration means your two different uh, component is there, right? R alpha is the tangential component and you are having the radial component as omega square R you are having all the values with you omega alpha and r and you can calculate the ar and at and then resultant acceleration will be at square plus ar square can you quickly calculate and type in hello can you hear me yes yeah, sir uh, so please type in your answers okay <coughs> okay sir okay okay so many of you are writing two questions sorry here you are having at equals to r alpha means what r is given as uh, 2 and alpha is given as 12 so you will have 24 then omega square omega is given as 4 so 16 into 2 will be 32 so when you square and add this 2 up you will find 40 so many of you have written it correctly so now let us go to the next one yes this one this one is simple right in figure uh, link 2 rotates with constant angular velocity omega slider uh, link 3 moves outwards with a constant relative velocity vpq right where q is a point on slider and p is a point on link the magnitude and direction of coriolis component of acceleration is given by uh, can anyone uh, answer this question it is easy only right yes can anyone answer See. No. Can anyone else want to try? A, A sir. Option A. A is the correct answer. 2 omega V is the magnitude and direction of A Q P is rotated by 90 degree in the direction of omega 2 only, right? This particular uh, V Q P is directed in the direction of this omega 2 in order to get the direction of Coriolis component right so 2 omega v will be in this direction v will be rotated in the direction of omega right yes sorry direction of omega 2 is inward in the plane direction of omega 2 is in the clockwise direction sorry the vector will be in the plane. Plane only, huh? These are all planar mechanisms only. Uh, uh, sir, sir, the vector of omega 2 will be into the plane, sir. No, no, omega 2 is having uh, the, uh, what we can say, clockwise direction. Uh, so, its vector will be into the plane. So, rotating VQP in the direction of omega 2, that is into the plane. So, it will uh, be in the opposite direction, no, sir? No, no, As no, no. See, your VQP is like this your direction of omega 2 is this clockwise so you have to rotate this vector of vqp 90 degree in the direction of this omega so this is how you will get your 2 omega v sir agar koi galti se ye samajh le ki omega 2 into the plane hai to sir mera to c aa raha tha to wo galat ho jayega na into the plane I guess I am not what? getting by because sir, all are planar mechanisms. How omega two can be into the plane? Sir, uh, sir, considering omega is a vector, so mm -hmm. omega can be into the plane. Uh, which plane? Uh, right now, whatever uh, screen is there, you are telling uh, is uh, into, the screen, sir. into the screen, sir. Okay, then. Uh, 
comes then, to omega crops b see then also if you take in that direction then also how can it be opposite to the direction of omega 2 that i didn't get still in your case also whatever you are telling inside the plane ha sir ha inside the plane then also how it is opposite to uh, this uh, डायरेक्शन ऑफ ओमेगा टू दैट कैन यू एक्सप्लेन क्योंकि ओमेगा क्रॉस वी होता है ओमेगा से वीपी की डायरेक्शन में पर यहां पे क्या कहा गया है वी क्यूपी को ओमेगा की डायरेक्शन में घुमाना है इसलिए वो तो अपोजिट हो जाएगा ना नो 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 आई डोंट नो व्हाई यू आर गेटिंग कंफ्यूज्ड बट हियर दिस वन इज द करेक्ट वन राइट आंसर ए इज द करेक्ट आंसर राइट सो यू कैन चेक एंड आई विल आल्सो See, okay. your, your direction of this uh, linear velocity of q with respect to is uh, in the outward direction. So, in order to get the direction of Coriolis component, what you have to do is you have to uh, give uh, 90 degree rotation to your velocity in the direction of this angular velocity. It is clockwise, so this way you will have. Are you getting what I am saying? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. So now let us go to the next one. Here also you have to type in your answers. Uh, what you have to do is here you are having the road AB of length one meter shown in the figure is connected to two sliders at each end through pins. The sliders can slide along QP and QR if the velocity VA of the slider. at a is 2 meter per second the velocity of the midpoint of the road at this instant is right so that you have to now calculate you have to assume one point at the midpoint of er right and what you have to do is you have to calculate the velocity of that particular point you have to calculate the velocity of that midpoint okay हेलो यस सर हाँ सो प्लीज गो हेड एंड कैलकुलेट यू हैव टू हैव इंस्टेंटेनियस सेंटर मेथड यू कैन यूज दैट सर आर इज मूविंग सॉरी सर इज लिंक आर इज दिस बोथ स्लाइडर इज मूविंग राइट बोथ स्लाइडर्स आर मूविंग इन दिस डायरेक्शन एट इज नॉट मेंशंस और डायरेक्शन आई गेस हियर फॉर ए इट इज मेंशन फॉर ए it is like this only right for a it is also sir, mentioned uh, sir it's going to be 2 meter per second let some others also calculate sir uh, one thing how how the direction of b would be the on the right side direction because if p rotates then uh, suppose r would be yeah uh, it, it may be inward right it side. may be inward it may be yeah 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 like correct but in sh in short it is in the horizontal direction so in order to build your instantaneous center diagram it is enough that whether it is uh, inward or outward but it is in the horizontal direction so mm -hmm. how you are going to start is first you are having this particular points a and r right and from that here as it is given in this direction your this 90 degree to this will be like this and here your 90 degree to this will be like this so this way you will have your instantaneous center of rotation i13 right because here you are having your i23 here you are having your i34 right because See, this is considered as link three. This road is considered. This slider is considered as two. This slider is considered as four, and uh, this fixed link is considered as one. 
right so this is your velocity of k this can be considered as velocity of r so perpendicular to both this when you take then you will have this instantaneous center of rotation so which one is considered as one one is fixed link q not q actually the sliders are uh, uh, sliding in this uh, particular slots na right okay. here is okay see. sir ha ah. so that is fixed is this fixed link right so then yeah uh, sorry for interrupting then the b is also fixed na sir b is not fixed yeah. na that slider is moving a and b both the slider sliders. is moving then a and b uh, as you told that yes yes, yes. that is that is fixed yes yes is yes, correct here yes, also, sir. here also it is a and yes, yes sir yes, yes, yes. that's correct. what i meant correct correct right now what you have to do is you have to calculate velocity of the mid point right here this mid point that you have to calculate so here you can call this point as c right so if you are going to calculate this uh, velocity of c right then you can calculate it by having this angular velocity theorem which says that va upon i13 a is equal to vc upon i13 c because this is a uh, link uh, same link rotating about the point i23 right instantaneous center of rotation so this acr is the same link so velocity of a is this linear velocity right so i13 a is the distance right and here also i13 c is also distance so omega is same for both this point a and c right because it is rotating around the same point i13 that is why omega a and omega c can be written as va upon this i13 a and vc upon i13 c now how will you calculate this from the geometry you have to check here it is uh, 30 degree i guess because this is 60 so this is 30 degree here this angle is again 30 degree right and this angle will become then 120 degree right this will become 120 degree now if you see the sine law in this uh, whole triangle a r i13 right if you take triangle a r i13 then 1 upon sine 120 Now this one is given, right? Link length AB is given. AB is one meter, right? One meter. So this one upon sine one twenty, this length and opposite angle. Similarly, I one three A, I one three A upon this sine thirty. So this will give you the dimension of I one three A, right? This will give you the dimension of I one three A. Once you have dimension of I one three A, then you can check the triangle I one three A C, right? So if you check this I one three A C, then in that if you apply sine law, then here I one three A C, this angle is ninety degree, this angle will be sixty degree. So in that I one three C upon sine thirty, I one three C. Upon sine thirty will be equal to I one three A upon sine ninety. Right, I one three A upon sine ninety. So as you have calculated I one three A, you can calculate now I one three C. So once you have I one three A and I one three C, and you also know. That this V A is given as two meter per second, right? So V A is given as two meter per second, and you have calculated I one three A and I one three C, so you can calculate V C. So can anyone quickly uh, calculate and tell me what is V C now from this data? Hello. Oh, one meter per second, sir. One meter per second. So all of you are getting the same. Sir, one thing I would like to ask you that uh, why the midpoint of the triangle is considered as a uh, link number three? It is not considered as link number three. 
So you pointed it out as number three, sir. Actually, this is the whole link. A B is link three. This slider is link four. This slider is link two. This whole link A B is uh, this link three. Okay, this, now I this got it. point is C only. This you can see. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Sir, I have a question. Hmm. Sir, uh, instead of going for two sign sign laws, will we be able to go by trigonometry that um, by symmetry uh -huh. uh, the triangle uh, 30 degree 60 degree that is uh, I A I 1 3 C mm -hmm. that triangle we can consider mm -hmm. and uh, since uh, the total uh, length of the link 3 is uh, 1 meter mm -hmm. and so half of it will be 0.5 so with that uh, we will be able to calculate I 1 3 C and Y 1 3 A sir. I guess there are several ways of getting the different dimension from geometry. So whatever way you find easy, you can take that way, right? Okay. 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 Now let us go to the next question. Sir, I have a question, sir. Yes. Sir, after calculating the I one three, uh, how we are getting the VC, sir? Sorry. Sir, after calculating the instant center, how we are getting the VC? From this angular velocity theorem, you are having this VA upon I13A is equal to VC upon I13C. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, sir. Okay. 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 Now, here, this is very simple question, right? Linear velocity of Q with respect to A, then it can be only one perpendicular component only, right? In case of velocity, you cannot have both the components along and perpendicular until and unless you are having a slotted lever and inside that uh, your slider is there. So, this option is correct, right? I guess this is easy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. So, yes. now let us uh, go to the next one very quickly. Yes, <coughs> this one. For this, you need to type in your answer. What you are asked is for an inline slider crank mechanism. The lengths of the crank and connecting rods are 3 meter and 4 meter respectively at the instant when the connecting road is perpendicular uh, to the crank if the velocity of the slider is 1 meter per second the magnitude of angular velocity of the crank is so what you are asked is angular velocity of the crank right so this uh, you can try I guess Right. This is. Second, can you go to the previous slide for a minute? Sorry. Second, can you go to the previous slide for a minute? Mm, this one. Yes. Ah. Thank you. Sir. Okay. Yes. Now you can see this one. So first, you have to uh, have idea that what they are asking is they are asking in a slider crank mechanism you are having your this connecting road is at the 90 degree connecting road is at the 90 degree right to the crank this is the condition given now you are asked to calculate the omega 2 right whatever it is, how you are going to calculate you are given the sliders uh, uh, linear velocity right uh, what is given the connecting road and cranks length are given as 3 and 4 right this theta you have to calculate you can locate instantaneous center right like this right I24 here this is I23 it will be I12 fixed link is 1 and this link is 2 I am rounding the link number because dimensions are 3 and 4 right so this is link number 3 and this slider is link number 4 
right so 3 4 will be here instantaneous center 1 4 will go to infinity as you know now here this i24 why i have drawn this because in case of this i24 i12 right into omega 2 is 1 because you know sliders uh, linear velocity we have calculated with this only right at that time we were given omega 2 right and we have calculated this now you are given this and you need to calculate omega 2 is nothing but the velo uh, angular velocity of crank now here you have to calculate this uh, i12 i24 this distance right so this distance you have to calculate from geometry i guess so for that what you can do is first you can calculate this theta that is tan inverse 4 by 3 right theta tan theta is 4 by 3 so theta is tan inverse 4 by 3 so 37 degree 30 uh, 53 degree 53 right approximate right then alpha you can have 90 minus theta right 37 degree this, this alpha will be 90 minus theta approximately 37 degree now once you have this then your cos alpha cos alpha is equal to what cos alpha is equal to 3 divided by because here also 90 degree angle. sir 4 by 5 uh, cos alpha 4 no. by 5 over. alpha is here na in this this triangle is having alpha this sir, I cost 37 degree to 4 by 5 hota hai na? This sir, cost 37 degree to 1 second, let me show you what you are calculating. You are calculating this distance, na? You are having this distance as 3. So, cos yes, alpha is equal to 3 upon this distance. I want to. Oh, oh, okay, sir. Yes, sir. I to yes, sir. Correct? Are you getting now? Uh, yes sir yes sir so from this cos yes, alpha sir. is equal to 3 upon i1 to i24 you will find the distance i1 to i24 so what is this distance whatever you are getting from this 3 upon cos that 15 by 4 whatever is this you can calculate this and once you calculate this then you can calculate omega 2 because omega 2 will be 1 upon this distance i1 to I sir, uh, sir, I am getting omega value of omega is 0 0.267. Is it correct? Yes, 0 0.266 is the answer. So, 0 0.266 or 267, whatever is the correct answer. Right? Yes, sir. So, are you guys done? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. So you got this one right? Yes, yes sir. So now let us go to the next one. So sir. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, please uh, move into the previous slide. Please hold. One second. Uh -huh. This one. Okay. Yes okay. sir. Yes sir. Okay. For a moment. Okay. Now answer. Okay, so now let us go for the next question. Again, you have to type in your answer. Let me read the question. Block 2 slides outward or link 1 at a uniform velocity of 6 meter per second as shown in the figure. Now, link 1 is rotating at a constant angular velocity 20 radian per second counterclockwise. The magnitude of the total acceleration of point P of the block with respect to a uh, fixed point O is total acceleration you have to calculate it means you have to calculate again those two components centripetal uh, sorry that uh, Coriolis component and that uh, this uh, centripetal component right so once you calculate these two component then you can uh, square them and add and under root them that will be your answer you have calculated this uh, kind of question earlier on earlier also right that 2 omega v is 1 uh, uh, vectorial component and r omega square is the other vectorial component so omega is given as 20 radian per second this velocity is given as uh, this uh, 6 meter per second right omega is given as 20 radian per second so 2 omega uh, v can be calculated and uh, then 
uh, from r omega square you will be able to calculate uh, this component because r is mentioned over here 100 mm that is 0.1 meter omega is anyway given 20 radian per second so are you guys getting what uh, you have to do yes sir uh, so please calculate it's coming 243 243.310 yes because yes. we are 2 omega v will come around 240 and r omega square will come around 40 so when you square and add them up right 240 plus 40 square the 243.310 or something like that is coming correct yes sir okay so now let us go to this last question Yes, here in a slider crank mechanism, the length of the crank and the connecting rod are 100 mm and 160 mm respectively. The crank is rotating with an angular velocity of 10 radians per second, counterclockwise. The magnitude of linear velocity of the piston at the instant corresponding to the configuration given in the figure is. You have to calculate a uh, magnitude of linear velocity of piston. Right, so VC you have to calculate. that you know that is omega of this crank right and instantaneous center whatever i1 to i24 is right that will be your answer here if you uh, draw the instantaneous center that your i24 will lie on the same point as i12 right so sorry i12 is here I24 will lie on that point only. I12 will be here only because this is link one, right? This is link two. This is link three, and this is link four. So I12 will be here only. But I24 will lie here instead of uh, extending it and all as you were doing it previously, right? In previous slides, if you see, you are doing it uh, by extension, right? This I24. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? Yes, sir. So I24 will lie on this same point here as point B, right? So now it is easy, right? Omega of crank is given. I1 to I24 distance is given. So directly you can calculate VC. What is your answer? One meter per second. One. So this is 1.25 meter. One meter. One meter per second, na? Because crank is 10 radian per second. Omega crank is 10 radian per second. And this distance is 100 mm means 0.1 meter. So 10 into 0.1 will give you 1 meter per second. 